Hello everyone. Welcome to Brilliant Bankers. This is the second part of the session on digital payment system in India. In the previous session, we have discussed about the global payment systems that is in the state of United States of America in United Kingdom and all the systems in Europe. Also, we have discussed about the NPCI, that's the National Payments Corporation of India, about the PSS Act 2007, and the Rupee Card and Rupee Secure System in India. So, in today's session, we will be discussing about the Indian digital payments, and we will be discussing about the CTS and the grid based CTS system, the BEAM, the APES, or the other enabled payment system, the other based payment system the national automated clearing house the national electronic toll collection systems the bbps the bharat bill payment system national financial switch the forex settlements and the security settlements all in the terms of the indian payment system so to break down the payment system in india it's totally it's mainly divided into four parts that is the notch the ABPS, that is the other based payment system, and wherein the other based payment system is again divided into two parts, that is the other enabled payment system and the BEAM. So let's discuss about this in brief. What is NACH, the National Automated Clearing House? The function of the NACH is to facilitate bulk interbank electronic fund transfers. And it is ideal for salary disbursements, pension payments, dividend payouts, etc. Wherein a single entity needs to send money to a multiple person or multiple beneficiaries. It is normally initiated, by, initiated typically by the corporate entities or the government bodies. And the benefits are so efficient, it is also cost effective for bulk transfers and offers two types of transactions that is a credit that is pushing funds and also debiting that is pulling funds in the notch you can have a notch debit and a notch credit what is a notch debit if an amount is being debited from your account that's called a notch debit that is emi payment or anything for a loan or any kind of transaction where you have set an automatic payment system that is bill payment for your electricity, for your mobile payments, for your internet, all are automatically being deducted from your account. That is a notch debit. And whenever there is a credit to your account, that is like your salary, your dividend incomes, or the interest income from the banks, these are all notch credits. So, National Automated Clearing House, that there are two types, credit and debit. Then comes the other base payment system. It is not a separate system, but an umbrella term. It encompasses two types of payments that is enabled under other. That is the AEPS, other enabled payment system, and the BEAM, other pay. It focuses on leveraging other for the financial inclusion, wherein it enables people with other numbers to access basic financial services at point of sales, even without any debit card or smartphones. So, what is AEPS or the other enabled payment system? It allows the basic banking transactions using the other authentication at POS terminals operated by the business correspondents, typically agents in the rural or the underbanked areas. It allows cash withdrawal, cash deposit. You can have your check on your balance. So, balance inquiry, they provide mini statement and other to other fund transfer for a limited amount is also allowed in a APS system. It benefits like the in the financial inclusion for those without debit or smart debit card or the smartphones. It's also convenient to access to the basic banking services in remote areas. So what is the beam or the beam other pay? It's a mobile app based payment system linked to the other. It is a person to person money transfer using a VPA address that is linked to your other. Merchants can also accept payments using the BEAM QR codes 
and it is convenient person to person transfer facilitates digital payments without debit cards or relying on internet banking and it also promotes cashless transactions so these are also the benefits of beam other pay coming to the next point there is a check truncation system what is a check truncation system the check truncation system is a digital initiative in india that aims to streamline and expedite check clearing by electronically processing these check images instead of the physical instrument as earlier these physical instruments were being sent from a bank to another bank for their transactions completion nowadays it is electronically processed and images are sent so this eliminates the need for physical movement of checks leading to faster processing times and reduced cost and enhanced security so we will be discussing how the cts works and what are the benefits of the cts so how does it work whenever you go for a deposit of a check or when you deposit a check at your bank branch a bank teller scans the front and back of the check to capture a high quality digital image and then the bank transmits the captured electronic image to the of the check along with the MICR that is the magnetic in character recognition data to a central processing sender and then the central processing sender managed by the NPCA that is the national payments control sorry national payment corporation of india routes the electronic check image and data to the processing bank and the drive bank at the same time the NPCA facilitates electronic clearing and settlements between the banks involved this involves verifying the authenticity of the check ensuring sufficient funds in the drawer's account and also initiating the funds transfers once the clearing and the settlement are complete the physical check is electronically truncated what it is electronically truncated meaning it is no longer required for further processing and is securely archived now coming to the benefits of the cts it is having a faster clearing system check clearing timings are significantly reduced compared to the traditional physical processing that used to be done earlier it also eliminates the need for physical transportation of checks resulting in cost savings for the banks it also have a enhanced security like the real risk of loss or theft of the physical checks is minimized and uh, improved efficiency by streamlining the check clearing process and reducing the manual intervention it also helps being economic uh, environmentally friendly wherein it reduces the reliance of paper and contributes to a greener banking system coming to the next part of the check truncation system we will be discussing about the grid based cts and the technology used in the grid based cts so what is a grid based cts we in india use the grid based cts model dividing the country into three grids with processing centers in chennai mumbai and new delhi this approach offers several advantages by reducing the processing time by lowering the cost wherein it eliminates the need for integrated transportation of physical checks where the costs are reduced by improved efficiency by streamlining the check clearing with the with and within the grid wherein the efficiency or the overall efficiency is enhanced what are the different technology that is being used behind the cts the different technologies that are being used behind the cts are image scanning and capture high resolution scanners are used to capture clear and accurate digital images of checks MICR recognition specialized software reads the MICR data that is printed on the check for routing and account information further secure data transmission is being done wherein secure communication pro protocols are employed to ensure the safe and confidential transmission of checks images and data electronic clearing and settlement robust IT infrastructure facilitates electronic clearing and settlement wherein it processes between the banks 
So overall, the CTS and the grid-based system in India represents a significant advancement in check clearing by leveraging the technology. And finally, this system offers significant benefits to banks, businesses and individuals, contributing to a faster, more sensitive and efficient ecosystem. Now let's discuss about the national financial switch. So what is a national financial switch? The national financial switch is managed by the National Payments Corporation of India, that is the NPCI, which is the largest network of sh shared automated teller machines. It was established in 2004. It plays a critical role in facilitating the convenient and secure ATM transactions ac across the country. So let's break down the key aspects of the national financial switch. The functions, the functions of the NFS. It connects ATMs of various member banks, enabling customers to withdraw cash, deposit funds, and access other banking services, irrespective of the issuing bank, as long as the ATM displays the NFS logo. So what are the benefits of the NFS? First thing is the convenience. It allows the card holders to access ATMs across a wider network, reducing reliance on a sp specific bank's ATM. Secondly, it's cost effective, wherein it reduces the transaction cost for both the banks and the customers compared to non using non-network ATMs. And also there is an increased efficiency. It also streamlines the ATMs operations and transaction processing. And finally comes the membership. So what is membership? This is about the direct members. Banks that directly connect their ATMs to the NFS network and sub-members wherein the smaller banks or the regional banks and the cooperative banks that participate in the network through sponsor banks and also the white label ATMs which are independent ATM operators can also be sub-members in the NFS. The technology, it employs secure and reliable communication protocols to ensure the safe and accurate routing of the ATM transactions. So as of January 2022, NFS boasts over 1200 member banks with access to the network and exceeding about 2.55 lakh ATMs, that is including the cash deposit machines or the recyclers. It has maintained a very high uptime exceeding 99.5% ensuring consistent service for the ATM users. Therefore, the NFS plays a vital role in India's digital payment ecosystem by promoting financial inclusion, that is by enabling wider ATM access, especially in remote areas. The NFS contributes to the financial inclusion for individuals who may not have any access to a branch of their specific bank. It also encourages the cashless transactions, wherein increased ATM convenience promotes the use of cashless transactions, leading to a more efficient and financial secure system. It also facilitates the 24-7 banking. Customers can access their bank accounts through ATMs anytime, offering greater flexibility and convenience in managing their finances. So overall, the national financial switch or the NFS is a critical infrastructure component that underpins a smooth functioning of the ATM in India. It also fosters a more inclusive, convenient and effective banking landscape for millions of users all over the country. Now let's discuss about the National Electronic Toll Collection. So what is National Electronic Toll Collection? In our country, the NATC or the National Electronic Toll Collection System is called the FASTAG. It's an initiative by the National Highways Corp Authority of India to streamline toll payments on national highways and expressways through the radio frequency identification. So let's go for a detailed breakdown on the FASTAG or the NATC. We'll be discussing about how it works, the benefits of FASTAG, the futures of FASTAG and the impact that FASTAG has brought. So how does it work? 
it comes with the acquisition of the fast tag you have to purchase a fast tag from a designated bank or a point to sell terminal at the toll plazas or online through the fast tag website or mobile app the fast tag needs to be activated by linking it to the prepaid or the savings account this can be done online or at a designated point we also affix the fast tag securely on the windshield of the vehicle whenever you approach on a fast tag lane at the toll plaza the rfid reader on the toll booth automatically detects the fast tag and detects the appropriate toll amount from the linked account and there is also seamless movement and the barrier lifts automatically allowing you to drive through the and without stopping for any cash transaction so what are the benefits of fast track it's convenient wherein it eliminates the need to stop and pay cash at any toll booth saving time and fuel it also reduces the traffic congestion faster toll passage due to the contactless transactions leads to smoother traffic flow also the cashless transactions means it promotes a cashless and more digital payment ecosystem there is also some the main point of transparency wherein transaction details are available online offering greater transparency and control over the total expenses and there it comes a multiple fast tag problem we can also manage fast tags for multiple vehicles through a single account also so what are the features of fast tag it's having a prepaid or a savings account linking which provides flexibility in choosing the account type for toll deductions it also have a low balance alert we receive sms or email notifications whenever the fast tag balance falls below a certain threshold and we do have a option of online recharge conveniently recharge the fast tag balance online or through the mobile applications and the current status of fast tag is that fast tag has become very mandatory for all vehicles on the national highways in india and non fast tag users have to pay double the toll amount incentivizing wider option of the payment through fast tag what is the what is the impact that fast tag has created fast tag has significantly reduced the toll booth congestion leading to faster travel times it has also promoted cashless transactions and streamlined toll collection for both users and the authorities the system is continuously being upgraded to enhance efficiency and the user experience so overall fast tag is a significant advancement in toll collection in india or the netc has brought in the fast tag for the same thing it offers a convenient time saving and efficient way to pay tolls contributing to a smoother and more digital transportation experience some of the key points to consider about fast tag are fast tag users might experience occasional technical glitches wherein we face it and it is also advisable to maintain a sufficient balance in your linked account to avoid any toll payment disruptions i hope this explanation provides a comprehensive understanding of the national electronic toll collection system if you are liking this session please do subscribe to our channel the brilliant bankers and do not forget to like the video and drop in a comment for the same now let's discuss about the bbps or the bharat bill payment system so what is a bbps and we will be discussing about how does it work the advantages of bbps how is how is it a boon for the financial inclusion and the future of bbps in india the bharat bill payment system is a one stop ecosystem that is designed to simplify and streamline the bill payments in india it is it was launched in 2016 by the reserve bank and driven by the national payments corporation of india the bbps system offers a convenient and interoperable platform for various bills paying payments electronically so how does it work what are the bills that you can pay through bbps bbps caters to wide range of billers 
allowing you to pay for your utilities like that of the electricity water and gas for your telecoms that is mobile recharges landline bills internet bills etc dth services the financial services like insurance premium loan repayments it also helps in municipal taxes wherein you can pay your property tax and the water tax you also can pay your education fees that is the school fees or college fees like uh, fees of kendra vidyalayas are taken through the bbps system of union bank so how does that work exactly bbps bbps operates on a three tier structure bbps central unit or what we call it as the bbpcu managed by the npci it acts as a central infrastructure for routing and clearing the bill payments then comes the bbpou that is the bill payment operating units these are entities like the banks or the non banking financial institutions and prepaid payment institution instruments which issues or all the issuers who connect billers to the bbps network then comes the billers these are the entities that provide services for which we can make the payment through the bbps system that is like the electricity companies the telecom operators and the educational institutions so what is the uh, typical flow of a bbps transaction we initiate the payment we select the biller we enter the bill details that is provide the bill reference number or the customer id to ensure the accurate payment allocation we review and confirm the same that is by verifying the bill amount and other details being confirming the payment and then go for payment processing wherein the bbpou what did we say about bbpou what is bbpou it is the bill payment operating unit bharat bill payment operating unit transmits the payment instructions to a bbpcu what is a bbpcu it is the bharat bill payments central unit so the bbpou transmits the payment instructions to the bbpcu again then happens the clearing and settlement the bbpcu again routes the payment to the billers bank and settles the transactions and finally there is a payment confirmation wherein we receive a confirmation notification for the successful bill payment so what are the advantages of bbps we have the convenience to pay all our bills from a single platform eliminating the hassle of managing multiple due dates and logins we also have interoperability wherein the work it works seamlessly across different banks offering flexibility in choosing the preferred payment channel it's also secure wherein it employs robust security measures to ensure the safety and confidentiality of the financial information all transactions are done in real time payments are reflected in the billers account almost instantly so there is a real time payment system that is going on in it. we have also have multiple payment options it supports various payment options like the debit card the credit card internet banking mobile wallets etc it also gives us the bill reminders some bbpous offer bill reminder features to help us avoid late payment penalties and it also has a transparency which provides clear transaction history and bill details promoting the financial control so how is bbp is going to be boon for the financial inclusion in our country it plays a crucial role in promoting the financial inclusion in india by enabling convenient and secure bill payments throughout a variety of channels it encourages people especially those in the remote areas or with limited access to traditional banking services to participate in the digital payment ecosystem and what do you think is the future of the bbps the bbps framework is constantly evolving so some of the points for that are potential for future developments are the expansion in the services wherein integration of more billers and service providers 
into the BBPS network, enhanced user experience, development of more user-friendly interfaces and features within the uh, Bharat Bill Payment operating platform, integration of account aggregators, potential future integration with the account aggregators for automatic bill payment and enhanced financial management are the future of BBPS. So overall, BBPS has revolutionized the bill payment, that's the bill payment landscape in India by offering a convenient, secure and interoperable platform. As it continues to evolve, BBPS is poised to play an even greater role in promoting the financial inclusion and streamlining the financial transactions for the millions of users in our country. Now, what are the things in the forex settlement? We will be discussing about the regulatory framework, the settlement mechanisms and the key participants. So to start off with the forex settlement in India are overseen by the Reserve Bank of India and primarily facilitated by the CCIL that is a clearing corporation of India. To break it down, let's go into the regulatory framework. The RBI establishes guidelines and regulations for the authorized foreign exchange dealers who can participate in the foreign transactions. The FEMA Act governs the foreign exchange transactions in India as a whole. The settlement mechanisms, the CCIL forex settlements. In this case, the CCIL plays a vital role in facilitating the interbank forex settlement in India. It offers a multilateral meeting system for cash, tomorrow, spot, and forward U USD INR transactions. Not only USD INR transactions, maximum, mainly the transactions are done in USD INR. So we specify USD INR and also multilateral netting offsets payment between the participants leading to significant settlement efficiency and reduce counterparty risks. The payment to payment settlement also. Since April 2015, the CCL has adopted a payment versus payment settlement system for forex transactions. This means that the delivery of foreign currency and the receipt of Indian rupees occur simultaneously enhancing the security and eliminating the settlement risk wherein the B RBI also intervenes. The RBI can intervene in the forex market to manage the exchange rate volatility. It can buy or sell foreign exchange to influence the exchange rate in the country. So coming finally to the key participants, key participants in the foreign trade are or the foreign forex settlement are the authorized dealers or the AD banks. These are the banks that are authorized by the RBA to undertake forex transactions on behalf of their clients. The corporates, the companies engaged in international trade need to convert the foreign currencies for domestic transfers and vice versa. Also, individuals may require foreign exchange for travel, education or abroad investments also. What are the different type of forex settlements? Forest settlement are mainly the spot and forward transactions. Spot transactions are immediate delivery of foreign currency against the Indian rupee, typically within two business days. And forward transactions are contract to exchange currencies at a predetermined rate on a future date. So what are the recent developments in the forest settlement? The RBI has been encouraging the settlement of international trade in Indian rupees to promote rupee invoicing and reduce the dependence on the foreign currencies. So overall, a robust and efficient forest settlement system is crucial for facilitating the international trade, foreign settlement or foreign investment and overall economic growth of the country. Coming to the security settlement, that is on date we are moving from a T2 to a T0 process that is a transaction plus two days from to a transaction on date process. So security settlement in India refers to a process of transferring ownership of securities, bonds or the stocks from a seller to the buyer after a trade is executed 
on the stock exchange like the national stock exchange or the bombay stock exchange so this process has undergone significant changes in the recent years with a move for faster settlement cycles so the traditional t plus 2 settlement what is the traditional t plus 2 settlement until recently india has operated on a t plus 2 settlement cycle meaning that the settlement of trades that is delivery of securities and payment of funds occur two business days after the trade date that is the t this involves several stages that is the trade confirmation by both brokerages that is involved the delivery instructions by the seller to the depository of the participant the fund transfers from the buyer's depository participant to the seller's depository participant and then comes the electronic transfer of the securities from seller's holding to in the depository to the buyer's holding wherein now we are shifting the gears for the t plus 1 settlement in a phased approach india's transition to a t plus 1 settlement system started in 2021 and was fully implemented in january 2023 this reduced the settlement time frame by one business day leading to faster trans transfer of ownership and quicker access to funds for both buyers and sellers and coming to the next thing where is the optional t plus 0 settlement with the sbi's push wherein the sbi is trying to implement the t plus 0 as of march 2024 india is taking a bold step towards the t plus 0 settlement also known as the same day settlement the securities and the exchange board of india has issued a consultation paper proposing a optional t plus zero settlement cycle for trades executed up to a specific time that is up to the time of 130 pm this means that for trades executed before the cut off time the settlement of the securities and trades or the funds could occur on the same day itself so what are the benefits of this benefits of a faster settlement cycle brings reduced counterparty risk enhanced market efficiency increase liquidity and also alignment with the global practices so what do you think is a road ahead for this security settlement the introduction of the optional t plus 0 settlement makes a significant step towards a more efficient and dynamic security market in india as with any major changes careful monitoring and addressing the potential changes will be crucial for successful implementation so let's discuss about the payments the digital banking and information security the payments digital banking and information security are all intricately linked forming a vital ecosystem for secure and efficient financial transactions so here is a breakdown of the connections the payments this refers to the transfer of funds between parties for goods and services in today's digital world payments are increasingly conducted electronically through various channels like the online banking transfers mobile wallets the upis or the credit or the debit cards coming to the digital banking this involves accessing and managing various finances through electronic channels like the mobile banking apps the online banking platforms and internet banking services wherein it transforms the banking landscape and promotes financial inclusion and user centric experiences the information security this encompasses the practices and technologies employed to protect the sensitive information of the customer data what are the customer data the account details and personal information the transaction data amount date and the pay details and also the financial information that is the account balances and investment holdings so what is the link between them that is securing payments information security plays a critical role in safeguarding payments encryption technologies scramble data in transit by protecting it from unauthorized access authentication methods like the passwords the 2fa or the two factor authentication and biometrics ensure only authorized users can initiate all these transactions the digital banking security 
robust information security measures are essential for secure digital banking also this includes measures to protect user credentials prevent unauthorized access to accounts and safeguard sensitive financial data that is stored electronically and finally building trust strong information security practices foster trust in digital payments and banking when users feel confident that their information and funds are secure they are more likely to embrace these convenient options so what are the benefits of the secure ecosystem it reduces fraud it has a enhanced user confidence and improved efficiency also let's discuss about the future of the digital payments in india and as technology advances and new payment methods emerge information se security will remain paramount and that will be the main thing that will be taking over with the future of the digital payment system with the technological technological advancements with the regulatory adaptations from the rbi and the npci the collaborative ecosystem of all the trade and the market expansion so continuous innovation and collaboration between the financial institutions technology providers the regulatory bodies will be more essential to maintain a secure and trustworthy digital payment and banking environment if you do have any queries please feel free to leave them in the comment section below please do not forget to like share and subscribe our channel the brilliant bankers this is nishan signing off have a great day jai hind